In this problem, we have a differential equation, and it appears to be linear. So recall a DE is linear if you can write it in this form. So dy dx plus p of x times y equals f of x. So if you can write a differential equation in this form, it's called linear. So step one when solving a linear equation is to write it in this form. This is called the standard form of a linear DE. So to do that, we can divide everything here by x squared. So let's go ahead and start by dividing everything by x squared. That becomes y prime plus 1 over x y equals 5 over x squared. Okay, the next step when solving linear DEs is to compute something called the integrating factor. The formula for the integrating factor is mu of x, and it's equal to e to the integral of big P of x dx. So big P is always whatever is in front of your y. So here, it's going to be this piece here. So in this case, it'll be e to the integral of 1 over x dx. And we know that integrates to the natural log of the absolute value of x. The e and the natural log cancel, so that gives us the absolute value of x. And so now we have a choice to make. So the absolute value of x is equal to a piecewise function. It's equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and it's equal to negative x if x is less than 0. So we get to decide which one to use. It doesn't matter. We're going to get the same answer at the end anyways. I always like to make it positive. So let's do this. And this is true if x is positive. You might be wondering, OK, why not make it greater than or equal to 0 like it says here? Ah. That's because x can't be equal to 0 in this problem because we divided by x. So at the end of the question, it's going to ask us for the largest interval over where the solution is defined. It's something we'll find in this question. And so it's going to come from here. So this is the key step where you can find the largest interval where the solution is defined, the step where you drop the absolute value. So super important. Okay, so now that we have mu of x, which, and we said it was equal to x, I'm going to put it in a box, just so we have it. The next step is to multiply our DE, that's in standard form, by the integrating factor. So let's go ahead and do that. So multiplying by x, we'll get xy prime. Multiplying by x here, the x's will cancel, so we'll just get y. And then multiplying by x here, we'll lose a copy of x. So we get 5 over x. Again, just putting an x here, putting an x here, putting an x here. This next step is probably the most important step and is the step where most people get stuck. So all of this magically becomes ddx of, and it's always going to be, it's always going to be your integrating factor. So it's always, I'll write it over here, it's always mu of x times your function always. It's always the derivative of this product. So in this case, mu of x is x, and our function, the one we're looking for, is y. And this is equal to 5 over x. So we should always check this. So to check this, you can use the product rule. Recall the product rule says if you take the derivative of f times g, think of f as your first function and g as your second function, it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So in this case, when you take the derivative of xy, it'd be the derivative of the first, which is 1, times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's exactly what we have here. That's our DE. <laughs> so this always works. Again, you just memorize it. It's always ddx. And then it's your mu of x times your function. Now, if you're differentiating with respect to another variable instead of x, it won't be ddx. But most of the time, it is. The next step is to integrate. So I'm going to go ahead and write integrate. Integrate. 
when you integrate, the derivative goes away, so we get xy. Here, when you integrate this, um, you just get natural log of x, right? If you integrate 5 over x, you get 5 ln x with an absolute value. And let's not forget the c. The last thing to do uh, would be to divide by x. So y is equal to 5 natural log, absolute value of x, over x, plus c over x. So this would be the solution to the differential equation. The question will also ask us for the largest interval over which the solution is defined. So again, that comes from this step here. So an interval notation, that would be parentheses 0 to infinity. You can also get it from here. But just by looking at the natural log, you know that x can't be 0. Um, so you could, you could guesstimate that it should be this. However, we have an absolute value here, so in theory, the natural log of x here is defined for everything except 0. So it really does come from, from this step here. We're also asked to find transient terms in this problem. So transient terms. Transient terms are just terms that approach 0 as x goes to infinity. So they're both transient terms. So this approaches 0 because the denominator x grows faster than the numerator because x grows faster than the natural log of x. So this approaches 0, so it's a transient term. Likewise, this other piece here is also a transient term because if you let x go to infinity, you get 0. So transient terms are terms that approach 0 whenever x approaches infinity. So if you take the limit of this, as x approaches infinity, you'll get 0. Likewise, this one will also approach 0. Lots of information in this video. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.